Hello everyone. Uh, today we're just going to do a little demo run. I'm going to try to keep it short. We're not going to try to break any records, but I thought it might be interesting for some people to see uh, sort of how we go about this and how we acquire the data. I've already uh, allowed the turbo molecular pump to spin down to about a quarter of its normal speed so I can have better control over the, the uh, gas in the tank. I have two solenoid valves, one in the deuterium supply line and another one in the line between the turbo pump and its core pump. And by pushing buttons, I can run the gas pressure up and down. Right now, it's on the high side. If I turn on the main power supply at current limits at 16, 17 kilovolts, um, and we'll show you what that looks like. It's sad that my camera likes to focus on the um, screen wire that protects us from various things rather than the fusion. Um, but that's, you know, real life. So let's fire her up. Turn on the high voltage power supply, and then let's just zoom in here. And like I said, we're focusing on the screen rather than the fusion. The actual focus looks a little bit better than that. And it'll keep getting better as I let out gas. So I have to turn the four, noisy four pump on. Four. The clicks you're hearing are a couple of neutron detectors, but not the ones we actually use for data loading. And it's trying to be pretty deep in the contract, but that's okay, that's just you know, not expected. Now I will let out some gas. All right, 30 kilovolts, a lot more people. And it went into oscillation and then went out. Now I have a solution for that. Did I run out of too much gas? No, really not. There's a couple ways to turn it back on. Once I have an auxiliary grid out the main tank, due to Passion's law, adjusting the uh, grid. In a sense, we've made a plasma triode here. And as you're hearing, we can make it oscillate. It's about to get really crummy because I'm going to unmount this off the tripod. And I'll show you the data we're actually acquiring. On the left clock, the green. Let me turn these neutron counter audio down. The um, on the left clock, the green line is current. The uh, red line is voltage. The purple line is the voltage reference. And the blue line is log, the log of pressure. Um, on the right side is uh, the red line is my Geiger counter. We saw some background back there around 100, 120 pounds a minute. That's normal for here. Goes up when we're doing fusion. We're not doing very much right now, obviously. Uh, I'll have to go over there and adjust some things. But uh, 980 counts is a minute is roughly a million neutrons a second produced. So we produced about 2 million for a little while there. Uh, way below our record is closer to 10. Um, I don't know if just holding the camera up here will give you a better picture of what's going on or not. But uh, what has happened to reduce the neutron count that we were seeing over there is probably that I kicked the <laughs> wall wart that supplies the, the counter. Yep. Suddenly, we're making a lot of neutrons. 
Although I suspect that one really high peak up there is uh, an outlier. It's probably due to me cycling the power. So let me adjust this a little more. And uh, we'll see what we can get out of it. If we can get a good hot neutron count for a little while, which it looks like we could get. Um, let's take out a little more gas. And adjust things. It went out. You can see from the current on the left plot up there, something going to zero. And now coming back up intermittently. We will then check some silver I have in a thing we call the neutron oven. It's basically a moderator made out of HDPE. Right there. And between two halves of that there's a piece of silver which has been getting uh, activated or made radioactive by the neutron. Let me put this back on the uh, tripod. Hopefully. There we go. And let me try to really run this thing and see what kind of snot we can get out of it. Okay. If you're seeing a little bit of incandescent orange glow in the back, that's because we're creating a linear beam focus. And those guys got to hit somewhere. <laughs> that's where they hit. And they heat up that little bit of carbon there, red hot. You might also see, especially if I zoom in, that the stainless steel screen that was preventing my camera from focusing is now incandescently hot from the beam coming out of the other end. Also, that the glass, of which there are two layers in the vacuum and then the glass between it and us, and the lift is, is uh, fluorescing in blue and um, White. We have all kinds of fun with this. Now, I'm holding a great big magnet. What happens? Okay. I can move that beam completely off the screen. It might be useful if I want to keep my glass alive. Let's see. At any rate, one more aspect of this, and now that I'll turn it off. Even though we've only been making a few, few new, million neutrons a second, that's not very much for us. Um, turn off the power. Turn off the noisy pump. I will go and get a piece of silver. And put it on this Geiger counter. Here, let me zoom back out so you can see me do it. This is the piece of silver that was back there. And throw it on the Geiger counter. And then I'll dismount the camera again and let's look and see how hot we made it. Now, you can see there a little after 350 seconds the power supply on the left plot just went to zero because I turned it off. And on the right plot is the Geiger, red is the Geigers. And we're seeing some fairly radioactive silver. It's like we got it up to about 1500 counts a minute or, or thereabouts. Um, Normally what we would do is watch this decay until we have enough information to interpolate a straight line back to the point here where we shut the fuser off. And now the only neutrons we're seeing are the ones from cosmic rays and stuff like that. You know, there's always some. Um, there's our silver decaying and it looks like if we extrapolate back up we're up at three or four thousand counts a minute just from that little bit of running including a bunch of stuff down there at the bottom where the, basically we look over here, the fuser wasn't running and we weren't making any neutrons and blah, 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 blah. So that's sort of integrating the average of all those. And you can see the silver decay. And one of the reasons we use silver is A, it likes to absorb neutrons, and B, it decays really fast. So <laughs> we can use the same piece over and over. Gold takes weeks to decay, indium takes many hours. So I could turn around and in about 10 minutes this will be back to the background and reuse that piece of silver, save me a little money. Uh, hope you enjoy this video. And oh, while we're at it, you know, there's my data acting, logging and telling us that nothing is happening because we turned it all off. There's our power supply. And there's a lower piece of HDPE that the silver was sitting on right over the reaction zone. This yellow thing is our neutron counter. This is the top piece of HDPE that was reflecting some neutrons back to the silver. 
And this is our power supply input to this whole mess. And these coils are probably the reason it's oscillating. Well, we hope they are. We didn't do it without them. So, everyone, this is what we do in the world. <laughs> that, yeah, that white thing was one of the, the left channel of the neutron counters. The uh, other one was, is so hard to find. <laughs> it's down here under the whole rig in that piece of white HDPE. And here's some detail on the back end. Normally we shield our power because we have EMI issues. So, for example, the power going to the ion source grid is nicely shielded with copper and uh, insulated with uh, PVC pipe. So, hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough and learned a little bit. Uh, we'll go into more detail later, probably in the comments, as well as more movies. Later on, people.